Do you want a way to manage your Raspberry Pis without having to use SSH? Do you want to read sensors or other devices on the Raspberry Pi without programming? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to use Raspberry Controller to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using Raspberry Controller to manage your Raspberry Pi. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video about using the Raspberry Controller to manage your Raspberry Pi. First, what is Raspberry Controller? Next, we're going to talk about installation and configuration. And then finally, we're going to do some demos on the different ways that you can use it, just getting Raspberry Pi info, monitoring, and showing if you've got the Sense app, some ways it can help you there. Well, you've probably never heard of Raspberry Controller, and to be honest, I did until a few weeks ago when I happened to stumble across it myself. It's basically a GUI or graphical user interface way of talking to your Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pis. You only talk to one at a time, but you can have multiple configured. And you can do things, it's just, just manipulating the GPIO pins. If you've got a Sense hat, you can interrogate that, see what's going on. So you don't have to do some of the coding you saw in another video that I done. Wish I'd found this before then. You can look at the temperature, uptime, CPU. There's a whole lot of things. So let's go ahead and get started because I think you need to be using this today. Now, Raspberry Controller is available in the Google Play Store. Now, if you've got an Apple or an iPhone, there is a version, but that's available on Apple site where we're going to be covering solely just this version. I would hope they would be the same, but I had no way to test that because I've got a pretty old iPhone. So this we're going to do this with my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I know it's getting long in the tooth, but buddy, it still works. So after you download it and you'll go in. Now, I've already got one device configured, but we're going to configure one from scratch because this is the one that's got the sense hat on it. So what we'll do is we'll tap plus and we'll put uh, this is going to be sense hat and then its address is 10.0.1.244. Username is pi. Yeah, I know. Well, it's a test one, so I haven't changed it. So you probably should change it and we will type in the credentials and we'll do a connection test. It should come back here pretty quick. Okay, can it's got it doesn't like the username. Okay, so I probably did something wrong, but that's a good way to find out. Whoops, I don't think that's enough dots. Okay, we'll do connection. Okay. Well, user error or an ID 10T if you haven't heard of that one. So connection's okay. And we'll click save. Now we'll go to sense hat. It's just verifying you gotta have SSH enabled when you set up the Raspberry Pi. So it's just verifying that yes we want to continue so what you can do here there's a whole host of things like we can go do raspberry pi intro and this is going to get us once it gets through reading the information and it may take a little bit of time the the first time through but you can see it tells us the version it's on serial number how long it's been up cpu utilization number of cpus it gives you quite a bit of good information and plus down here when you can get into the cpu and gpu temperatures so that's good it verifies your core revolt Voltage, tells you how much memory you've got versus what's available, gets into the file system, and it gives you, from a troubleshooting standpoint, the MAC address. So this is something, if you don't have this document somewhere else, and you may not, that you can get to that readily at hand. So that is well worth its price right there. Now, we can go into a host of other ones. We'll look at CPU and disk monitoring. Now, this is going to have to do some update, but nothing that you can't deal with. And it will tell you a lot of times the exact commands it's got to go do. So if you want to document this and have this as a part of your normal setup, then that's something certainly that you can do. But it really doesn't take that long. And I've got the Raspberry Pi just off to the side here running on wireless. So it's going to tell us right now. See, for example, it gives us the amount of CPU utilization, tells us the RAM, how much of the SD card is being used. So there's really a lot of good information. So it's continually pulling that. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi that's acting a little strange, this will give you some good information to work with. You can tell about the process now, this is when you really get into the hood from the Linux side, but you, this can you get to this from an SSH session? Yes, but this gives you an option where you don't have to. You can do GPIO pin control. You can even do SSH from here if you want to. Now, it's going to be a little tiny, so if you're doing this on, a, on an Android tablet, probably going to be a little easier. But again, this is one 
tool that does everything. So let's go back here and we're going to say interrupt because that's the only way we can get out. So that gives you a good idea of where to get started. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. This is the part that caught my attention and that's being able to interrogate the sense app without doing all the Python configuration from the video that you saw me do. And if you want to do it, that's fine, but I always like to have an option. So we will go down here and we will look at sense hat and it's going to have to install a few things, but it'll handle that automatically. This is another indication why it's good to have periodic backups of the SD cards just in case something would happen. So again, it's already finished and it's telling us the temperature and there there's issues where the temperature maybe is not quite dead on but we can deal with that one so we'll see let me tilt this a little bit to the side okay so it's you know it's obviously reading those sensors just peachy keen barometric pressure is on hand the temperature's a little off but this is a less than a $40 card folks so that's one of the things that may not be totally spot on but at least it gives you some options you can see what's going on now you can go down here into LED panel we will do let's type test and guess what let me reach this over here and i don't have my other camera turned on but we will do this again now isn't that slick if we want to do an all on panel color we can call yellow okay you can't maybe it's a little too close to the camera sensor but let's try try changing colors we'll send okay so you can see it's going to have a little bit of a color difference but this is again something that is at least kind of lets you play with it so that you at least have a frame of reference when you go to do the actual coding that you probably will want to do now from here you can do a uh, shutdown device no we're going to cancel that one you can reboot, which is handy from a GUI. You know, again, you can do this via SSH, but this gives you an option. So, and you can dim, you can go to, uh, there's other sensors you can get in. You can talk to the Pi camera module, the camera USB. So this is really a good kind of a Swiss army knife type tool to have just when you, when you want to start getting a little more adventurous with your Raspberry Pi. Now, this is one thing I wanted to make sure I got in on this video, and that's the ability to have the pinouts and diagrams. So you've got all the references here for your different Raspberry Pis. Now, for example, we're on the Raspberry Pi 4, and this has even got the Pico in it. So you can go in here and it gives you all the pinouts and you can just e expand your screen a little bit so you can see very easily, even on a smartphone, what pin is what. It gives you all the different information, tells you about the PoE header, gives you a good legend at the bottom. It will go into, let's see, the sense hat. So it gives you good information there, what pins are going on. So again, this is handy, if nothing else, for the built-in documentation that you've got. And let's go one other thing here, and you can fire a single LED. So it shows you how to hook that up to be able to do other testing there. It shows you about hooking up a relay. So there are there's four port relay boards that you can actually use this to control things such as you know, maybe your garage door controller or an AC device using the relay as an isolation point so that you're not directly exposing the Raspberry Pi to an AC device. So you see there's quite a bit of information in here besides just controlling the Raspberry Pi. You know, being able to reboot remotely is nice because sometimes you it just decides to lock up and may not want to talk to you. At least this way you've got a shot at getting it. So this is something definitely you need to give a try today. And I think you're going to be wanting to have this in your wheelhouse on a regular basis. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.